Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today wherever you are. I had a lot of things come in in the past few weeks. Like I've got my, still my July Ipsy Glam Bag Glam Bag Plus to do. And um, I had purchases from Ulta, Sephora, you know, last month. Oh, was that July or no? Oh, that's my August Ipsy, sorry the July so this will be the August I can't believe it's September already my birthday was at the end of August so I have Ulta and Sephora birthday gifts and I looked around and I realized you know I have enough stuff here to do almost a complete face of first impressions so I figure before shooting all of the other videos, I'll do that first. And so I'll have makeup on for everything else. Um, I had promised a subscriber, gosh, a long time ago, a first impression of the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. And so here's this. So I've been holding out on that. I have that now. Obviously I've had that. And I went ahead and I purchased the Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Concealer to go along with it. It's been sitting for a while, unfortunately, so I've kind of had to shake them both up. I'm sure they're both fine since they have not yet been used. And for setting powder today, I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty Butter Pro Filter. And I thought it was kind of interesting when I opened up the box and it has the typical, you know, you just open up the lid. There's no puff that comes with it. There was a sticker that covered up the, where the product comes out, where it's just these perforated holes with the FB for Fenty Beauty. And then this thing was in a separate plastic um, sleeve thing that it actually fits down inside the holes to obviously make it more travel friendly. I found that to be interesting that they packaged it that way rather than just straight having that plastic stopper in the top. It seems like a little bit kind of a waste of plastic honestly. But anyway that's going to be the setting powder that we're going to use. I also purchased the Jackie Aina Ina. Um, I've watched her videos a few times. I'm sure you guys have seen. She did a collab with Anastasia Beverly Hills and I have her palette. So that's what we're going to do first is do the eyes. Um, I have already moisturized, uh, sunscreen, primed, you know, all the usual suspects there. I did get a new of uh, the Origins, the last one that I'd been working on for I know well over a year and a half did finally did finally get used up so the packaging has changed a little bit it's got like this little instead of a cap little twist nozzle to lock and unlock but otherwise same price same product to for the moisturizer and sunscreen instead of using separate ones I did use the add-on or one of the add-ons for my August Ipsy and that is the Perlis Blue Lotus Daily Moisturizer that has 30 SPF in it and it does absolutely smell like sunscreen so if you don't like that scent probably not gonna like it I hadn't realized when I added it on that it was for normal to dry skin of which I have combo as you know, oily on the sides. So luckily for me, I did purchase also the Fenty Beauty, the new um, True Matte Primer, which I have already put this on. Um, I was a little surprised that it came out really super runny for a matte primer, but then when I put it on, it did actually feel, I could feel it um, that almost kind of granular, like, but the mattifying kind of feel to it and then the rest of the primers that I already have on is just my normal Ulta Beauty under eye primer uh, the MAC 
painterly paint pot for the lids. And then the milk blur stick. I've been grabbing this a lot lately. Anyway, like I said, to try and save at least a little bit of time, I have already moisturized, primed, yada, 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 so we can jump right in to the Jackie Ina. I think it's Ina. I apologize if I'm saying her name wrong. I believe she's a beautiful woman. I've only watched a few of her videos, but she just seems, she seems like somebody that would be like my best friend. Congratulations to her. This is fantastic. I'm very, 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 very happy for her. And obviously I do love the, the palette itself, the packaging, while it's the same size and general layout of their palettes of this size, this is definitely a different texture from the other palettes that I have that are more kind of a, a velour kind of finish to them. But let's take a look at the shades. I'll just hold this up here real quick. So, I'm pretty excited. It does come with the typical little insert that lets you know, because this is not only shadow, but a pressed pigment palette. And it's letting you know that Supreme, Pinker, and Big Wig are not intended for use around the immediate eye area. That is a disclaimer that they have to throw in there because of them being pressed pigments that some people do experience staining on the eyelid from them. I have other palettes, same thing, uh, where I might have a, or at least I take it off at the end of the day and you can still kind of see the pink on the eyelids, I'm um, thinking specifically of the Jeffree Star Drawbreaker draw palette that I have. Uh, beautiful pink, lasts all day, it's gorgeous, but it does kind of stain the eye, wash everything off, do my normal skincare at the end of the night, and when I wake up the next day, the discoloration is gone. So, like, I'm not gonna worry about it. Besides with the, the Painterly Paint Pot, covers it up anyway, so you still have that blank canvas for the next day. So with that said, let's grab my crease brush, and I do think that with as pale as I am personally, which Jackie did design this palette more for women of color, but it also looks like it would work well for paler shades as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jackie. And with that said, let me see. I think I'm going to dip into Supreme, which is one of the pressed pigments, and use that as my transition shade. Here it goes. So transition is on. I think for the lid, I want to use the shade Lituation. Of course, sponsored is super pretty too. That kind of has a greenish, goldish shift to it. I think actually I'm going to go with sponsored. A little green and pink. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Wow. That's that, I mean, you can, it, it's green, but it's gold. It's got that kind of duo chrome shift thing going on. I like it. I like it a lot. And now I'm going to go on the side of kind of caution and safety, and I'm going to go with, I think it's pronounced Soleil, Solile, because that is definitely kind of a pinkish gold it kind of looks like in this lighting. Or maybe even more of a yellowy gold that goes along with this green quite well actually. That is pretty, 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 pretty. 
Good job, Jackie. And let's see. I'm going to go with Credit, which is a matte brown for the outer corner. set this aside and we'll get ready to do the foundation now i have both my juno and company sponge over here i also have my uh, foundation brush from wayne goss i think what i'll try is sponge on one side foundation brush on the other see how that goes i don't have my little paddle with me but this foundation is the one that comes in a little dropper so I think I might just you know drop it on my face and hope I don't miss and get my eyes all up in it let's get the powder and the dish so we can move right into doing the um, concealer so I've got a fan going so hopefully the fan doesn't blow the powder everywhere but let's see if we can get a look at it. It is very finely milled. That gives me great hope for my creepy under eyes. But let's see if we can do this without making a massive mess. That would be awesome. Again, here is the foundation. And rather than a pump, it's literally like a medicine dropper. So let's see if I can just, just a little bit. Uh -uh, uh -uh, that's running everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to wish that I used my little dropper thing, but let's see. I'm kind of surprised at how much I have to use, quite honestly. It is, I would say, a light to medium coverage. It's most definitely not full. It's not covering up all of my pigmentation in the slightest. But it seems to be building okay. So, let's see how it does with a brush. So I gotta say so far, at least in my mirror here, if not in the monitor, I am liking the actually the brush side better. It doesn't seem like I had to use as much as what I did with the sponge because these, you know, the Juno and Company sponges, they don't typically soak up a ton of product. But then I've been using this one for a while and I think it is starting to break down. So it is already settling in my fine, not even so fine, settling in the smile lines and the deep ones up top. Uh, getting around my nose is always a challenge. So blend a little bit more here and then we'll hop into the concealer. Okay, so again, here is what the concealer looks like. There we go. And it is your typical doe foot applicator. Kind of gigantic. Let's see how much we need to use. I like to just go sparingly, as you know. I hope for the best. It smells like paint. Ugh. 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 So now we're just going to smooth out those lines that were, they've settled in and I'm going to then set the rest of the foundation as well. For the brows today, I only bought one shade because uh, they just 
I don't think they had the usual mix that I could do of like blonde and taupe, but I purchased the Fenty, Fenty Beauty Brow MVP. And so this is what the pencil packaging here looks like. Now, on the one side where you have usually a spoolie, it's instead a like oval brush. Yeah, like this way. Instead of that, the typical spoolie, which I thought was kind of interesting. So I'm gonna brush with the brush. Usually I use my little standalone spoolie, but you know, what the heck. I'll do that. Does the job. Now when I opened up the other side, I'm going to be very careful to open it up this time, because when I opened it up, the product itself, which is just like that typical like Anastasia Beverly Hills, um, come on, focus in there, just that typical thin tip. It was actually way up out far from there, so I don't know if that is the entire product that just is doesn't seem to be connected, or if somehow it broke and it's just you know, like yay much of it that is coming out. So it's a little concerning, but just be careful and you if you purchase one and you open it to maybe not open it upside down or sideways like I did and lose the product out of the packaging. But otherwise it seems to be like rolling up and retracting very well. It's not like the MAC one that doesn't retract. I, I still don't understand that. But anyway, well, let's get to putting this on. How much does the shade on here say? Does it say? Does it say? Medium blonde. Medium blonde is the one that I purchased. So the formula feels quite a bit stiffer, more waxy than the Anastasia Beverly Hills. It seemed a little bit more difficult to apply, if that makes sense. But I mean, it appears to be doing the job. Next is usually bronzer blush highlight. And what I'm going to be using for the bronzer and the highlight today is that J-Cat Beauty Symphony Face Obsession palette that has highlight, contour, bronzer, all in one. This is the light to medium. So we'll hold this up so you can see that I have not tried this yet, even though I did, this was part of an unboxing that I did last month and it's got all of the instructions on there. I am kind of surprised that the bronzer actually has shimmer to it. Don't know why, but okay. Maybe bronze are supposed to. All the ones, or I think most of the ones, if not all of the ones that I have, are a matte. So we're going to go into the contour shade because the contour one, which is what I would have thought of as a bronzer, is what I go first. And they're going around in the areas that I would normally go. Oh good, I was afraid that was going to be too dark. <laughs> and it's not. Yay! And then for the blush, because I do an order, you know, bronzer blush highlight, is that I'm going to use the one from my August Ipsy, the Pixie by Petra in the shade Whisper Pink. This is what this looks like. As you can see, it's kind of got that raised up, even Pixie by Petra, and it's kind of, kind of a shimmery shade there. So highlighter. They've got two different shades. One's more of a pinky, one's more of a champagne. I think I'm gonna go with the more pinky one. 
Does it have a name? No, just highlighter one, highlighter two. So I'm gonna go with highlighter one. I'm definitely going to need to take my other powders and tone that down, like, a lot. That's better. Not nearly as so crazy looking. Okay, so now it's time to grab the eyeshadow palette again and go back in and get that under eye area finished. And uh, we'll get into doing the mascara. So I'm going to grab, obviously this is something that is not new. This is the Voluminous Lash Paradise Primer. And then for the mascara today, we're going to use the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Extreme Lash Multiplying Volume Mascara in 01 Extreme Black. I got a little sample size of this in a recent Ulta purchase that there were several little mini mascaras. It was one of those deals, you know, buy so much of this stuff and then we'll throw, you can either pick this one or this one, throw the, the stuff in for free type of thing. Okay, so now onto the mascara, which like I said is the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Extreme Lash Multiplying Volume Mascara. Let's take a look at what the applicator spoolie looks like. It is ginormous. And that's always interesting when you have this, you know, tiny little sample thing, gigantic spoolie. Whew. But it's thin, so hopefully I'll be able to get in close and not make a massive mess out of myself. Let's give it a go, shall we? with as wide apart as the bristles are on this. It's kind of difficult on the lower lash line. Hopefully it'll be better for the upper. I guess we shall see. I don't know about it being lash multiplying or volume. I mean, it to do a good job of separating them. I do not appear to have made a massive mess of myself, which is impressive with the size of that wand. But I'll have to look up and see what the full size is or what the full size costs. But if it's on par with the normal Estee Lauder, which is more not luxury but a, a higher brand a higher end costing brand it's definitely not drugstore so i'm it's okay it's mascara i'm not it's not blowing my socks off basically and that's even after using the lash paradise primer which usually with every other mascara that i've tried it with makes it look fantastic and I mean, you can tell that I have eyelashes, you know, I don't look like I've got bald eyes, but um, eh, nah, nah. anyway, okay, so uh, the next one is doing the lips. I don't know if I have a lip liner. Yeah, I don't think I have one that would be considered a first impression, but the lippy that I'm going to use today is the Lime Crime Plushies in the shade Turkish Delight. This was part of an Ulta haul. And I'm just going to use my Boundless Berry Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil, as they call it. Let's take a look at what we have here for the applicator. I do not recall if this is supposed to have a satin or matte finish. I'm obviously hoping for matte because 
Well, let's see. So you got your typical little doe foot applicator. It doesn't look too furry like that last, I think. I think it was Dose of Colors that was just everywhere. My lips are rather dry, but they don't seem too flaky, so hopefully this looks okay, because I did not exfoliate them last night like I normally do, because I didn't wear any makeup yesterday. Gotta, gotta go without every now and then. But here we go. Let's see how this does. Oh, it's a nice thin formula. And I was able to completely do my lips with just one dip. I didn't have to dip back in and get more. I could probably layer on some more because since it's a thinner formula, it's not gunky or goopy or anything. It's slightly sticky, but it feels like it's drying down rather quickly, so that's good. And even though my lips were quite dry, not exfoliated in the lightest or in the slightest. It does not appear to be emphasizing those dry spots. Like I got that, it just looks like perfectly smooth, like I had actually exfoliated. So I like that. That that's nice. All right, and then now typically the next step in my routine is I will get up close and personal with these under eyes. Now, I've been using Bare Minerals Concealer for a long time. The Bisque, I had recently then started using the Summer Bisque. And then on the 21 Days of Beauty, they had Well Rested on sale. Uh, so I got two for the price of one. That I'm pretty excited about. Always happy when that happens. This one actually says that, you know, what I think people were saying in comments is that they put on a liquid or cream concealer first and then we'll put well rested on over the top. I just kind of thought like it was another finishing powder type thing. I was kind of surprised to find when I got them in the package that it does actually say concealer on the top just like the bisque and summer bisque which lately it seems like the Summer Bisque has been a slightly too orangey dark for me. So good time to try this one, see how it goes, because as you can still tell, even with all of the concealer that I put on from the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, it is still quite kind of ashy under there because I have such pronounced dark bags under my eyes. It's genetic. I've had them since I was a child. They're not gonna go away. I just get to deal with it. But anyway, I will take my, I know it's a Real Techniques. It's actually supposed to be a, a setting brush, but I use this to brush away any excess uh, powder from setting it. And then I'll go back in with my little, do my little Q-tip trick real quick. Let's take our Well Rested see how that goes and it's got the typical bare minerals where you can slide it closed i like to have just you know one opening there so i don't get out too much product but then you can close it for travel and don't have to worry about opening it up and going everywhere oh that is a much lighter yellow than either the bisque or the summer bisque. But let's put it here on the left eye. See if we can tell a difference between the left eye and the right eye. Can't really tell a difference, quite honestly. <sighs> so probably the search continues, but this also helps to set that concealer too, even out any of the crepiness, which it's, you know, the crepiness is still there. All right, and then last but not least, I am using the Milk Makeup Blur Spray for the setting spray. So that's what this looks like. I have at least already primed it so I can not be sitting here going 
for five minutes. Now, when I was first spritzing it out, it had some pretty big drops to it, so hopefully that's just how it looks like to begin with, and it doesn't, it's not gonna be like all over, uh, you get the idea. Let's give it a shot. Hmm, kind of smells, smells a little funky. And yeah, there's quite a few pretty large droplets there, but I'm sure it'll, it'll dry. Yeah, you can see quite a few big droplets all the way around. But yeah, this is it. This is the completed look. I think it looks pretty, pretty good. In person, it looks a little dry, but I also use a lot of powder. So let's just go through the new stuff here really quickly so far. And since I do have several other videos that I'm going to shoot, I will check in periodically and just kind of let you see how the foundation is doing. But let's see, for the new stuff today, the Blue Lotus Daily Moisturizer. Like I said, it was with SPF 30. It does smell like sunscreen, like the typical stuff that you use heading to the beach. So if you don't like that scent, or if you're sensitive to it, you might want to skip this one. But otherwise, it seems to be doing just fine. I was afraid I'd end up like a complete greasy mess. I mean, I did just finish putting everything on. So we shall see if the, then the, once again, the True Matte for the Fenty Beauty Primer, if that kind of helps even things out. So far, so good on that. Eyeshadow palette, I love it. Jackie, you did a fantastic job. Thank you for making it so versatile that even somebody pale like myself can get a very nice look without it being too in your face. Beautiful job, beautiful job, congratulations. I love this. I look forward to playing with this more, more color combinations and whatnot. I will probably be messing with this every day for work, at least for a while. Love the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette formulas. The bronzer and highlight palette from JCat Beauty. I do like the, the contour. I did not try the bronzer because it is, it does have shimmer in it, which to me is, it's just, it's just a little weird. The highlighter, at least highlighter one, which what they suggested was using it as a brow bone highlight and the high point of the cheekbone highlighter two, they suggested that one for the center bridge of the nose. And then it says nasal fold area. I don't want to highlight my smile lines. Don't want to highlight creases. You only want to highlight something that you want to bring forward and bring attention to. That's the last thing I want to bring attention to. Uh, so I didn't use highlighter two, but I used highlighter one in all of the areas that I normally do. And it was actually pretty, pretty chunky, but toning it down with the usual powders seemed to work just fine. So if you want a affordable bronzer highlight palette, JCat Beauty is pretty good there. I mean, it looks, looks great. Uh, the Pixie by Petra blush, I did have to go in a couple times, build up that pigment, but then I built it up too much. <laughs> Luckily for me, since everything else was a little bit too much, toned right on down with the powders, so I like that. The mascara, I think we've already decided that, nah, this will be a pass, unfortunately. So that little guy was probably the only one of those that I ever have, unless I get it in a beauty box. The Blur Setting Spray, that has dried, but of course I do have a fan blowing on me, as you can tell by my hair blowing around. 
so you don't see those big spots anymore. We will see as time goes on and other filming gets done how I like that or not. Oh yeah, the concealer. Mm. Like I said, you can still see the darkness shining through and that kind of a ashy kind of look. So I don't know if I just didn't get a dark enough shade of the concealer. It does smell like paint. Um, if you've ever tried the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, it smells exactly like that. But luckily, the scent does not stick around, so that's fine. The Bare Minerals, what's it called, Well Rested. I don't look well rested, but then I never do. Uh, it's more of a yellow tone than the bisque or the summer bisque. The regular bisque is more of a peachy tone. Summer bisque is a little bit, a little bit darker, but still kind of that like darker peachy tone. So we'll see. The lippy, the lime crime plushies, which it also does kind of have a cute little teddy bear. <laughs> That's adorable. It has now dried down. Thankfully, it is completely matte. It's not emphasizing the dryness on my lips, which I am very grateful for. I like this one. I may be grabbing for it actually quite often, at least until it gets to be a little more into the fall season and maybe too light of a shade and then I'll pop it back out in the spring. But anyway, that's it for this video, at least for now. I will be checking in with you in a few hours for me, seconds for you. I will see you soon. Okay, so it has now been several hours, I wanna say it was around 3.30, 4 o'clock uh, when I finally finished up my face. I have had dinner. I have obviously been drinking my water. I have not blotted or touched up at all. I just finished shooting one of obviously several videos and I'm going to do a quick check-in and then I know I just heard the laundry beep so I need to go work on laundry again. I've done several loads. Most spent most of my time sitting in front of my Vornado fan. As you can tell by the wind blowing through my locks. But let's see if we can zoom in real quick and see how this foundation has worn so far. And obviously gathering around here. I'm shiny on the sides of my nose. Kind of gathered in those deep wrinkles up on top. Kind of seems to be breaking apart here. So, not great in the longevity department, but those are my trouble areas. That happens literally every single foundation, so it's no better, no worse than any of the others. The concealer is going along just fine. I don't notice really any difference now from when it first went on. I am loving this Lime Crime lipstick formula. I had um, salad and teriyaki chicken, which I, of course I managed to get all over my lips. And it is, they're hanging in there. They're not, they're not sticky. It didn't rub off. I will probably be wearing this to work tomorrow. Either this shade or the brownish shade that I have. It depends on what I end up coming up with for my eye look. The, which leads me to the eyes. Loving, loving this palette. Can't wait to play with the other colors. I think it still looks just as beautiful now as it did when I first put it on. It hasn't faded. I typically have some issues with that on the inner corner, but I, I think it still looks fantastic. 
So I'm impressed, super happy, yay. Um, let's see, the powder, I'm sure that's helping the concealer stay in place. The, the primer and the moisturizer, concealer from Bare Minerals. The, I mean, you can still see the flush on my cheeks. The bronzer and blush and highlight, still doing beautiful, hasn't faded. I don't touch my face a whole awful lot, so that's fine, but I would end up obviously taking my blotterazzi and erasing those wrinkles as it were, patting out the grease around my nose and my chin. I may end up having to take something to kind of, you know, touch up where it's breaking apart. I do definitely like most of the stuff that I tried today, except for that strong paint smell on the concealer and wasn't impressed with the mascara. But otherwise, everything else is performing, you know, pretty normally. The eyeshadow palette is definitely raising the bar on quality, so I definitely I don't mind that I paid full price for that one. That's a good palette. That's a good palette. Don't know how well the Milk Makeup Blur setting spray did anything since in, I mean, my pores don't look super huge, but it's, you know, didn't seem to do much to keep things from settling into those deep wrinkles, but then nothing does. But anyway, so that's it. That's this almost full face of first impressions. If you like the video, please like the video. If you like me, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you all in another video soon. Bye!